Another year, another release of the iPhone lineup. What's going on folks? It's Midas here and I've got two of the new iPhones here with me. The iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'll be unboxing and setting up both of these phones and considering one of these as a worthy replacement for my aging iPhone XS Max. Let's quickly take a look at what's inside each box. First up, let's look at the blue iPhone 13. I'm definitely a fan of the blue colorway of this iPhone and of course as usual Apple is back again with their minimalist packaging. In order to get into the box we'll rip off the two tabs with green arrows showing the direction to pull them in to break the seal of the box. Once that's all done and the enclosement is open the first thing you'll notice is the iPhone face down with the camera being the most noticeable thing due to its size. The camera system is supposed to be one of the biggest upgrades to the new iPhone 13 models. There's also a white sticker on the screen which can easily be taken off to reveal the 6.1 inch OLED display. It's the same Super Retina XDR display from the iPhone 12. So far, the design is very similar to that of the iPhone 12, but one thing we already heard from Apple is that the new iPhone 13 models would weigh a little more than their iPhone 12 counterparts. For the iPhone 13, that's 11 grams more than the iPhone 12, and I believe it's because of the bigger battery upgrade, which is another big feature in this year's iPhone models. Next thing we'll grab out the box is the Lightning to USB-C cable, which unfortunately still leaves us with the same Apple charging system. There's also a few papers including the Apple sticker and a SIM ejection tool inside the box. No charger or ear pods of course because Apple dropped those last year. Alright, let's see what's inside the iPhone 13 Pro Max box. I'm actually more excited about this one than the last one. From the minimalist packaging, you can already tell that it's considerably larger than the iPhone 13. I've got a huge thing for anything that's got gold so this colorway has my heart. Being used to a bigger phone coming from the iPhone XS Max, this almost feels like what I'm looking for already. It's the same way to get into this box, just pull on the tabs. Inside this box, everything looks pretty much the same as in the last one in how they're placed. The most noticeable thing with this model again is the cameras, with the inclusion of a third telephoto camera as opposed to the iPhone 13 we just looked at. All three cameras on the iPhone 13s have seen big improvements, which we'll get into during my quick test and first impressions. This also comes with a white sticker which can be taken off easily to reveal one of my most anticipated upgrades, the 6.7 inch OLED, which is a Super XDR display just like the iPhone 13, except with a high 120Hz refresh rate for silky smooth navigation. As for what's left in the box, it's the same as we saw in the iPhone 13. On the left side of the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro Max, there's the volume controls, the SIM card slot, which is situated a little higher on the Pro Max than the 13, and finally, the silent mode switch. There's nothing but the gold finish on the top side, the lightning port and the speakers reside underneath the phone. The only button on the right side is the power button. Taking a look at both phones, the most noticeable difference right off the bat is the screen size, which is 6.7 inches on the Pro Max and 6.1 inches on the 13. The second major physical difference is in the cameras. The Pro Max has a telephoto camera included for more shooting options as opposed to the 13. There are five different colors of the iPhone 13 to pick from. Starlight, Midnight, Blue, pink and red. Pricing for this model starts at $1099 Canadian dollars and that is not cheap. As you add things like more storage and accessories, the price increases further. But this pales in comparison to the pricing of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. As for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, there are four colors to pick from. Silver, graphite, the all new Sierra Blue and then gold. Pricing for the top tier pro level iPhone 13 starts at a whopping $15.49 Canadian dollars. This one definitely isn't for everybody. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the iPhone 13 and see what it's got to offer. As usual, I'm going to push the power button for a couple seconds here to get it up and running. It's a familiar process to set up the phone that I'm sure all you iPhone users out there are already familiar with. The display, which has a maximum typical brightness of 800 nits, is the same as that of the iPhone 12 Pro Max from last year. So that's an improvement I can see already. The screen looks really good and the setup process is pretty straightforward. All iPhone 13 models now support 5G internet for super fast downloads and lightning quick streaming speed. So make sure you have access to 5G internet if you want to exploit this feature. Another thing that I see here is a smaller notch, which honestly would be better off being gone completely. Hopefully we see that in the next iteration of the iPhone alongside USB-C or no ports at the bottom of the device. The brand new A15 Bionic chip in this iPhone has Apple's new 6-core CPU with two performance 
and four efficiency cores, as well as a four core GPU. Apple claims this makes the iPhone 13 faster than the competition. The overall phone is a lot faster and more responsive than what I'm used to with the XS Max. The Super Retina XDR display seems to respond pretty well and navigation through common social media apps like Instagram feels great. I'm not a big fan of small form phone design so the size of this wouldn't work for me even for the Pro model. The first time you open up the camera app on the new iPhone models you're asked about photographic styles and which one you would like to equip. There are four presets to choose from comprising vibrant, rich contrast, warm and cool as well as a standard preset. This is a new iPhone feature I'll be testing further to see how useful and functional it is. Looking at the options at the bottom of the camera app, everything looks the same as with the iPhone 12 except now there's a new addition. The all new cinematic mode. This mode is supposed to be Apple's newest video mode that's supposed to be great for creating amazing videos using features like focus racking. This feature applies a fake bokeh effect allowing you to focus on one thing in the frame only. It's basically supposed to give the feeling of shooting high quality cinema videos, but I'm going to have to test that feature further as well. Since the iPhone 13 only has the wide and ultra wide cameras, it only has an optical zoom of 2x and there's only two options of camera types to choose from for both video and picture modes. The picture quality of pictures taken with the iPhone 13 look amazing, especially in comparison to the iPhone XS Max, which I've been using for about three years now. I've only played around with the cameras a little but intend on taking lots more photos with it for the review of this iPhone. Let's go ahead and fire up the insanely expensive iPhone 13 Pro Max and see if there's any major noticeable differences between both phones. Push and hold for a few seconds to power up the phone just like the iPhone 13. The setup process is exactly the same through every iPhone model so I'll just go ahead and do that as well. The display on the Pro Max is the brightest of all the iPhones out there with a maximum of 1000 nits of typical brightness. This is 200 nits brighter than the iPhone 13 regular version as well as the iPhone 12 Pro Max from last year. This iPhone 13 model is the only one to feature Apple's Super Retina XDR display with ProMotion technology for adaptive refresh rates up to 120Hz for silky smooth navigation and buttery movements on the screen. The iPhone 13 Pro Max features the same A15 Bionic chip found in the iPhone 13 with one exception. Instead of a four core GPU like in the 13, the Pro Max has a five core GPU apparently making it the fastest chip in a smartphone according to Apple. As far as the speed of the chip and how much it can handle, Geekbench has some scores for you and I can tell you that the improvement is immediately noticeable. A15 Bionic working in tandem with ProMotion makes this phone a joy to use so far. I'll report back on this in my review of this iPhone. The Pro Max has all of the same options as the 13 for video modes and picture modes. The major difference between both camera systems is in that third telephoto camera which provides the Pro Max with a 6x typical zoom. The Pro Max can also shoot ProRes video format in 4K which is the format that professional video editing apps like Final Cut Pro X tend to use. I'll definitely be doing more testing with the cameras on this phone. Here are my thoughts on both models so far. As with both iPhone models the camera system is one of the biggest upgrades. Apple has made improvements to the wide ultra wide and telephoto system. Although both displays are amazing, the screen on the iPhone 13 Pro Max appeals to me more based on my history with phones with larger displays. There's also the adaptive 120Hz high refresh rate that's supposed to make everything very responsive on the Pro Max and so far I can already see the improvement. Both models also have a 12 megapixel camera system with wide and ultra wide cameras being the common denominators but the iPhone 13 is missing the telephoto camera that's present on the Pro Max so it only has a 2x optical zoom range as opposed to the 6x of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Both models also feature the all new A15 Bionic chip that's supposed to make the iPhones faster but the Pro Max has a 5 core GPU over the 4 core GPU in the 13 making it the faster of the pair. They both have bigger batteries compared to their predecessors but the Pro Max is supposed to have up to 28 hours of video playback while the 13 should have up to 19 hours. In both cases there's still an improvement over previous iPhone models. The iPhone 13 and Pro Max both start at 128 gigabytes. 
but the Pro Max is the only model with up to one terabyte of storage, which honestly is a lot of storage for anyone looking for that kind of stuff. I've got the 128 gigabyte version here and that's more than enough storage for me. I'd rather pay for cloud storage instead. If you're familiar with Apple tech, then you know that the company only makes incremental changes to the iPhone lineup every year. I believe upgrading your iPhone yearly is a personal decision and I would not judge anyone for doing it. Hell, if we all had some extra dough laying around to blow on the latest and greatest iPhone every year, we'd probably do it. The iPhone 13 is the best balance between cost and getting a lot of the new upgrades like an increase in battery life and most especially the better cameras. The only problem with going for the Pro Max is that it's the priciest of all the iPhone 13 models. If you need the Pro features or just really want to experience them, then you might as well say RIP to your wallet, but at least you'll have the best phone from Apple at the moment. The iPhone 13 still represents a cost effective way to get some of those new upgrades. The iPhone 13 mini is still the most budget friendly as was intended by Apple. And the Pro is just a budget friendly version of the Pro Max. For me, I'd love to do more testing on the battery, the displays, and the camera system to see which one I'll end up upgrading my iPhone XS Max to. Right now, the Pro Max model is at the top of my list. Stay tuned for the review and comparison video, which will be posted as soon as I'm satisfied with testing both, which shouldn't take too long. If you do plan on getting the new iPhone 13, leave a comment down below which one of the four new iPhone models you'll be getting. One last thing, make sure you protect your iPhone 13, whichever one it is you get. The cameras are very expensive to replace and so is the screen. I'm using an Amazon brand phone case that costs me 13 Canadian dollars like I do every time I buy a new phone. This one also comes with a couple of screen and camera protectors. It also comes with an attachment for MagSafe compatibility. If you enjoy this video, leave a like below and make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's Midas and I'll see you guys in my next video.